Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Aditi and today we are going to learn about alcohol related liver disease. Now, what are the different patterns of liver injury that alcohol can produce? Alcohol can cause fatty liver, alcohol can cause alcoholic hepatitis and it can cause cirrhosis. Now, how do you define an alcohol use disorder? Well, for someone who has been having more than 3 drinks in a day, if it's a male or if a female has more than two drinks in a day and if this pattern has been going on for more than five years then he or she would qualify for a alcohol use disorder. There are several more objective tools to identify whether the patient actually does have a alcohol use disorder like the audit score. But generally by and large when we see a patient in the outpatient department for a male if he's having more than three drinks in a day and if it's a female more than two drinks in a day and if this pattern has been going on for more than five years then we would have to think of a disorder. What is binge drinking? Now binge drinking is a pattern of excessive alcohol consumption and how do you define it? So binge drinking is defined by intake of five drinks or more over a two hour span in males and the same thing if it happens as four drinks over a two hour span in females then we would call it binge drinking. Now binge drinking is one of the drinking patterns that is associated with a high risk of alcohol related liver disease. Now one drink essentially looks at one glass of beer which is 14 grams of ethanol which is going to be equal to 4 ounces of wine which is in turn going to be equal to 1 ounce of 80% spirit. Now here you are able to see that one single measure of spirit is going to be equal to about 1.5 measures of lager and this is going to be equal to 2 measures each of beer, cider or glass of wine and that's going to be seen as 9 measures in a bottle of wine. So this is to tell you roughly how each measure look like. So this single measure of spirit is one measure and then uh, alcopop or a can of lager is going to have 1.5 measures. A usual pint of regular beer or a glass of wine is usually going to have two measures. So if somebody says he or she has drunk one glass of wine or one pint of regular beer, that's two measures, that's two drinks. And in a bottle of wine, there is going to be equivalent to nine measures. So based on this, you can find out when your patient gives you the history, what is the quantity of drinks that he consumes every day. So let us look at how alcohol goes about in causing liver injury. Now this ethanol that is consumed is rapidly absorbed and taken up by the portal vein into the liver. Now ethanol is acted upon by an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase 1 which is present in the liver and ethanol is converted into acetaldehyde. Now acetaldehyde is a culprit because it has direct toxic effects, it produces reactive oxygen species, it's going to cause DNA damage and lipid peroxidation and through all of these it results in significant hepatic injury. Now the acetaldehyde is again acted upon by another enzyme in the liver called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and acetaldehyde is converted into acetate as you are able to see here. Now this acetate is converted into acetyl-CoA which is in turn converted into triglycerides and fatty acids. So you are able to see how downstream ethanol is converted into acetaldehyde then into acetate, acetyl-CoA and finally triglycerides and fatty acids and this is probably why one of the first manifestations of alcohol related liver disease happens in the form of fat accumulation or steatohepatitis. Now this is going to increase the genes for lipogenesis, also increases the ratio of NADH to NAD, reduces beta oxidation of fatty acids in the mitochondria and cause fatty acid mobilization all of this is going to result in hepatic steatosis. Now let's look at etiopathogenesis. Now alcoholic fatty liver per se, what happens as we just saw with the ethanol metabolism, there is going to be formation of acetaldehyde and all the other reducing equivalents that gets accumulated. Now all of them downstream is going to result in lipogenesis and impaired beta fatty acid oxidation which is what we just saw. And that is going to eventually result in accumulation of triglyceride which is what is going to cause this fatty liver which is what is the first finding in a patient with alcohol related liver disease. 
what is alcoholic steatohepatitis now these uh, alcohol metabolism products particularly the acetaldehyde it causes mitochondrial damage it impairs glutathione and therefore it increases the oxidative stress in addition so on one hand you are able to see that the reactive oxygen species are increased and there is an imbalance between antioxidants like glutathione and the reactive oxygen species therefore there is going to be significant mitochondrial damage on the other end you are able to see that these aldehyde adducts they also act as autoantigens and this is going to activate the immune system and that is going to result in release of pro inflammatory cytokines which is going to translate into more and more damage in addition to this there is also an alcohol mediated direct induction of leakage of gut endotoxin so through all of this patient ends up in alcoholic steatohepatitis so the aldehyde adducts not only cause an imbalance between antioxidants and oxidants resulting in mitochondrial damage but also act as autoantigens resulting in release of pro inflammatory cytokines not to mention that alcohol itself directly results in leakage of gut endotoxins so what happens here in alcoholic cirrhosis all the pro inflammatory cytokines the oxidative stress lipogenesis impaired fatty acid oxidation so basically the downstream end products of the alcohol metabolism they act through all of these different forms and all of them together result in hepatocyte apoptosis and necrosis so impaired fatty acid oxidation lipogenesis uh, imbalance between oxidants and antioxidants not to mention the direct induction of leakage of gut endotoxins and uh, these aldehyde adducts which act as autoantigens which result in pro inflammatory cytokines all of this will result in hepatic necrosis which eventually results in this alcoholic cirrhosis so there is going to be a stellate cell activation and collagen production and release of fibrogenic factors all of which results in progressive hepatocyte damage and fibrosis which is what is characterized by alcoholic cirrhosis so remember that in ethanol metabolism the acetaldehyde and all the other downstream products like acetate acetyl coa all of them they result eventually in formation of triglycerides and fatty acids so there is lipogenesis in addition to that what we often find is there is also a decrease in the fatty acid oxidation in the mitochondria not to mention there is also going to be an imbalance between the oxidants or the reactive oxygen species and the antioxidants because of this imbalance there is going to be significant mitochondrial damage in addition these end products also act as autoantigens now these autoantigens are going to release the pro inflammatory cytokines which play a key role in hepatocyte injury and damage and finally there is a release of the gut endotoxin so all of this together act they accelerate the hepatocyte damage and they result in hepatocyte apoptosis and necrosis on top of that when there is collagen production and release of fibrogenic factors all of this will result in cirrhosis